welcome back. This is the Shaken Up Show playing away season two, episode one. I'm Johnny Greenelsh, and tonight's guests are Jonathan Gaines, who is general manager, and Keith Edelston, who is in charge of all things media at Stockport Town. Before we bring the lads on and we have a chat with them, I'd just like to say how exciting is it? that we are just days away from a game of football. Andy and the lads back on the pitch after what was a fantastic year last year. Just like to say thanks to all the players, staff, volunteers who um, made last season possible. And let's do it again this season. We're going to do it. A couple of things to tick off the list. New shirts are available. Pre-orders for this batch finished today. So if you're going to order one, you might... um, might have to just wait a couple of weeks for it to arrive. Season tickets are on sale. Get your season tickets now. There'll be a link in the description in the bio. Um, and without further ado, let's get the Shaken Up show off to a fantastic start. Jonathan, Keith, how are you doing? Let's go. Very good, thank you. All right, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you on. Um, if you could just introduce yourselves and tell us about your roles at the club, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, so I'll go first. I'm uh, I'm Jonathan, Jonathan Gaines. Everyone knows me as Jono. Um, so I'm general manager at the football club. So basically oversee the day-to-day running of, of the football club and, and the operations. Yeah, yeah. Keith, can you tell us a bit uh, about your role? Uh, well, I, I'm the media guy that um, come last year just to get involved and help out. And we have took on this role and we're doing really well at the moment. Some things I'm still learning, uh, and Jonathan's taking me through it and everything like that. But, yeah, I do all the media and everything. Fantastic. Okay, well, my first question I've got, really, and um, I'll go to Jonathan first, is so how did you get involved with the club? So, basically, a bit, bit, it's a bit of a um, history with, with Matt Janssen. Um, so, I worked with Yanni uh, for 10 years uh, at Chorley Football Club. Um uh, and then Yanni told me about Mark Stott, you know, buying the football club and he was going to be manager and would I be interested in coming to help him? I said, and, you know, I, I, I've i got a great relationship with, with Yanni and I said, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd love to. You know, I'd been out of football for a couple of years um, and football's my life. It's my hobby. You know, I, I love it. Um, and it's just really snowball from there. You know, one thing led to another where I thought oh, I might, might just be signing players on and, like me and Keith, you might notice we've got a bit of a sweat on our bros. <laughs> We've just been tapping in beer and setting the bar up for Saturday and things like that, you know. So, um, so, so yeah, it really came from from my relationship with Matt Janssen, um, you know, and uh, unfortunately he went back to his role at Stockport County um, and then Paul Turnbull took over. But I've got a great relationship, you know, with 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 the whole management and uh, and the staff, which is which is brilliant. It's it's excellent. And Keith, what drew you into the? Because obviously, I I do the media at but Berry. What drew you into the uh, crazy world of non-league football media? Well, what happened was I've been a, a football manager for well since nineteen ninety four with, with junior teams and women's teams, and I've just just about had enough. I've done twenty five years, and I've took teams to the Isle of Man to play them. And one Saturday, I was at home, only live up the road, and the FC Isle of Man was playing down here. So I thought, well, I still know a fair few of them in the management. I'll come down and say hello, because I don't get to see them often. And I come down, um, I spoke to them guys, went upstairs for a pint, and Judith made me so welcome. And the next thing I know, John was next to me and the, extolling the virtues of the club. And it just... To be honest, it was something I wanted to do away from management. I've, I've done the managing time now. I've done all that sort of stuff. And the, the media, I've done the media for the, the women's teams that I was doing. It's just like progression from there. This is a bit more professional than what I used to. So, yes, I do make a few little mistakes here and then. Don't we John O'Reilly's been. <laughs> Don't but, we all? Um, <laughs> it, it's, that's how it was, really. It just started as a, a chance of coming down, and it went from there. Fantastic. Um, so tell us a bit... Bit more about the club. Obviously, you're you're based in Stockport, but where, whereabouts in Stockport are you based? What's the stadium called or the so, ground? So it's Stockport Sports Village. So it's not it's a community hire facility, really. So we we don't actually own own the ground. We we hire it. Um, 
you know, but it's a good facility. It's, in fact, it's a fantastic facility for the league that we're in. And a lot of clubs that visit us, you know, really enjoy, you know, the experience and the match day experience that, that we provide. And, you know, talking to a lot of clubs last season, they look forward to coming to us because of, you know, friendly faces and the things that, that, that we offer. And, and it's a fantastic facility, like I say, and, and it's based in Woodley. So it's where the old Woodley Sports used to be. I don't know if you remember Woodley Sports. I do not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so they, they were Northern Premier League and, uh, and in that league and then it went to Stockport Sports and now Stockport Town. Um, so yeah, we're about 15, 20 minutes actually outside of, outside of Stockport, but in a really good location. And, you know, it's a bit difficult in times because it's at the back of a housing estate, but, you know, it, it's, it's a good pull on, on um, local supporters. And being being um, one of the community facilities, is it? Are you on a three G? You on a yeah, artificial? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's an artificial pitch. Yeah, yeah. excellent. We've, we've played on a few. We played on a few of them uh, last year. Uh, it, they they vary, don't they? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, we we played on uh, at, at TNS's ground actually when we played uh, St Martin's, and that was just different level that was like up to world world class yeah, standard exactly wasn't it? Was. it it was unbelievable come and then and then some of the other ones i, I know you know one that that you might have played in on is uh is up at jmo and that that's not that's not the best that's probably coming to the end of its life whereas this pitch is is relatively new it's only a couple of years old so excellent one of the best i've seen is the one up at darwin that what a what a surface they've got yeah. there so yeah. so it's a good one so um the, the club, obviously, like you said, um, they, they were one, cl- one club before and it's changed names. Are there any other interesting facts about the club or any other historic notes about the club itself that we might find interesting? Um, obviously, we, I'm relatively new to, to, to the club, you know, having joined in June. Um, the club really, as Stockport Town, was only formed in 2014. Um, it was owned by by a company called PFA and, and Carlos Rocker, who used to play at FC United and at Chorley. So, you know, I, I know Carlos from, from when I was at Chorley. Um, and then obviously uh, in July last year, Mark Stott, who won Stockport County, um, a bit of a long-winded progress, pro, you know, um, process that, because obviously he had to go through the FA and, and the North West Counties to be able to be ratified to own us and, and, um, and Stockport County. But he, he bought... He bought PFA, and in terms, he, he, he got Stockport Town as well. Um, you know, and, and we reverted back to the original sort of 2014 colours in, in, in red shirts, black shorts and black socks, which is the colour scheme that you'll see around the ground, you know, when, when you visit on, uh, on Saturday. Excellent. OK. So how, was, how did they the get on last season? Because you were at Urinar, obviously, you were in the opposite league to us you're in the south league weren't you so um we know a yeah. few of the teams um but i didn't follow that league obviously as closely as we followed ours <laughs> uh how, how did you get on how did they finish so so i'll start and then i'll let keith take over the the last bit but obviously the takeover was quite late in july so in real re- realistically we sort of had our pre-season once the season started because we just Got a group of players together and 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 did our best. So, you know, we we started quite quite slowly. We had quite a big turnaround of of players uh, come in and, and and go out. And then, sort of October time, we went on a on an unbelievable run of eight or nine games where we won, um, and it really shot shot us up up the table. And and then I think we were up to about eight, uh, seven yeah, or eight. Yeah, eight eight probably at one point. And. Um, and then Matt Janssen went back to, to County, um, you know, and and Paul Turnbull took over. And again, we went on a little mini yeah. mini run, which at, at the time we thought, well, we could get in the playoffs. But, you know, Keith will probably yeah. tell you a bit more where, where, how the rest of the season finished. Yeah, we, we, we seem to get all... The, when Paul Turnbull took over, um, as every player does, they, they raised the game and they want to play and show the manager what they can do. And that six or seven game run that we went on, was fantastic. There was one game against uh, Cheadle Nomads, which was the best game I've seen all season. Absolutely ripped them apart. Um, after that, we sort of stuttered a bit. We, we lost players here, there and everywhere. And then we went 
to the Isle of Man, I think it was second or third game to go. Something yeah, twenty sixth like of March we went to. Yeah, the Isle of Man. and we, we thought, you know, we've only got a threadbare squad, but we went there to the playoff winners, and we absolutely gave them a right good game. It's fantastic. We finished on a bit of a. I think we lost the last couple. I think we did. Yeah, but it, it it was hard. I think it just the way it went. You know, it's... we we actually came back from the Isle of Man, didn't we? We. Yeah. Uh, and and everybody, the fans, all came to us and said, you know, you you've got a young squad. You know, the majority mm. of them, unfortunately, that went to the Isle Man were 17, 18 year old, and you know they put on a really good show, uh, and uh, we got a lot of, of plaudits for for our performance, not on the pitch but off the pitch as well. You know, as a relatively small club, the number of fans that that went over to support us was was unbelievable, and we. We, I came back from there, and I, I assume Keith did really, really proud of of everybody yeah. and, and the football club. And um, you know, we made that much of an impression. We've even got two FC Alaman supporters sponsoring one of our players. In fact, oh, five, five, of, five, of, five of our players, yeah, five, five yeah. of our players, and, and they're actually coming over to a game on the twenty third of July. So fantastic. that's the one away day that all our fans keep asking about. Well, it's fantastic. I just hope we don't get them on a Tuesday night because it's just Liverpool, Liverpool, and it. It's uh, you don't go over there on a Tuesday night, do you? You get them. Well, well we, we 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 actually flew from Manchester, um, so we went early Saturday morning, um, and then you get transfers, you get hotel, you get pre-match meal. Uh, and then you come back on the on the Sunday afternoon, and uh, it, it was it was fantastic. And and to be fair to to the Isle of Man, you know their organisation and and the way they conduct themselves is, is second to none. It's fantastic football club. I wait for it. I mean, I've I've watched some of the highlights on uh, on YouTube, and I think I tuned into the playoff playoff game. They had a stream for that. They do yeah. look a good club, and that ground looks. They get four three or four thousand in, don't they? It looks. I think three, three, three thousand three hundred was the top crowd they had last oh, yeah. year. But it's um, I don't, I don't know how they're going to do it with the away fans because I mean yourselves, we know you'll take a fair few there. So I'd, I'm not quite sure how, how yeah, they're well, going to do it. What they will do. West Didsbury took three, three hundred, I think they said. Mm. So that that was probably the biggest away following, you know, they had. Um, we just there didn't leave that home really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go, Berry fans. Three hundred's the number to beat. <laughs> That's um, <a> tag. <laughs> um, so this is usually the part where I ask about going into the game at the weekend who's your one to watch but obviously it's pre-season so we're probably going to see two teams of 11 the trialist family I'll have the proudest day of the year um, yeah, trialist A, B, C, D how's how's recruitment been going is your, you know you're wrapping it up early are you leaving it late are you, no is, we, 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 we're done we, we, we've don't. got one, we've got one more to do probably, um, you know, and there'll always be a few surprises al- along the along the road. I'm I'm sure Bully will, will have you know later on in July them there might be one or more one or two more. But we've been really proactive this this season uh, and this pre season, and you know we've recruited really really well. Um, really, we've got a, a great great you know team that 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 he's that he's put together. Um, you know, and, and we've signed, we've signed people like Michael Rains, who, who you might know from from Stockport County and Football League, and and up at Hartlepool. And last season he was at, at Ashton United, and, and he's come and and signed, you know, and committed to two years. And you know, and obviously then we've got Paul Turnbull, who's player manager, and and then we've we've got players like William Shawcross, Dan McLaughlin, Kyle Foley, all really excelled at Cheerleaf Nomads last season. So we've we've got a really Strong squad, but we've we've built we've built on top of what we had last season, you know. So we've we've retained, you know, players that that will will, will play higher, you know, and probably could have played higher. But they've they've, you know, we've got a bit of stick because we go on about the project that that we've got, you know, where we want to be, yeah. you know. But but if you didn't have a project at a football club. And you didn't want to get promoted, then for me, there's no point in you know that, that's, no that, point in being in a league, is there? That's yeah. it. You don't you don't want to just be where. Well, I say that some clubs do seem like they would just happily sit where they are for the rest of their days, but 
you know, you've got to have some ambition. You know, it's definitely not our plan to knock around in the northwest counties for the next ten years. You know, we we, we want to rock it out. Is it? You know, it's, no. not, it's not being disrespectful, but for me, you know, if you come into a, into a league, you get into it to to get out of it to get promoted, yeah. don't you? Uh, and and that's 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 our objective. It was our objective last season. It's our objective this season, and it'll be our objective next season, whichever league we're in. You know, um, but but we've recruited really well, and and you know a lot of credit goes to 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 Paul Turnbull and and, uh, and Mike Jeffries is his assistant. Uh, you know, and um, we we work we work within a strict budget. You know, and we're quite lucky that we've got a budget. Um, and we won't hide that, that we've got one, but, you know, we work to it strictly and we don't go beyond our means, you know, and, and you know, we we try and we're trying to grow the attendances. We're trying to grow our sponsorship, which we've done unbelievably so this, this so far this season, you know, the, the commercial attraction that we've, that we've got so far has, 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 has been excellent. And, um, you know, long may it continue, you know. Definitely. It's no, it's ambition, th- it's the one thing that you need as a football club. If you've not got any ambition, you are just going to sit here for the, yeah, the rest of the days, aren't you? It's, you know, I want us to get into the, the Northern Premier. I want us to get into the National League North. It's, you know, it's just how long it takes us to get there. Yeah. It's all about gelling together now as well. I mean, you can sign the best players in the world. If you don't gel them together, then they're not going to commit. So, totally. you know, that's what this pre-season will be all about now. The results although do matter because you want to win every single game you play. But the, you that's know, it. Yeah. We lost that. We lost our first preseason game last year. Um, we went to Exton Villa, who are now in the Northwest Counties. Good yeah, on them. Yeah. Yeah, um, and and uh, we got beat for, for first first preseason. And it was like I think everyone sort of was a bit like, oh. That's not... <laughs> but then you look at how we did in the league, and it's like preseason is just about fitness. It's about yeah. minutes in the legs. Yeah. It's about gelling. You know, that's why I like doing these for preseason because people are a lot more happy to talk about the players and how the recruitment's going. Because when you ask, you know, bake up Borough the week before you play him, oh, who's you want to watch? They're like, shut up. I'm not telling you that. You know, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know well, I'm, I'm not giving the game plan away. You know, yeah. so it's. um uh, it's nice to talk about it. But getting to the game on Saturday, for those Berry fans travelling down before the game, um, you know, some of them like a, a drink or a bite to eat before, is there any way you'd recommend to them in the area? Yeah, stop, stop Port Sports Village. Stop Port Sports Village, there you go. There you go. And what time does the um, the the bar and whatnot open at Stop Port Sports Village? No, being being truthful, at, at the top of the the road on on the entrance into the the housing estate is uh, is a pub called the Woodley Arms. Yeah. Um. So that's probably the the most local um place place to go to. It's quite a large pub as well. Is that a food yeah. and drink, or is that just a boozer? I think it's food and drink. I've not been in for a while. I must admit, I think it's food and drink. But we want them to spend all the money at Stockport Sports Village. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gates open. Um, at- Gates open at two o'clock. Two o'clock. Okay. So if you're in Stockport before two o'clock, go to the Woodley. If not, get down to Stockport Sports Village. Yeah, exactly. um, now this is a this is, uh, next question is my last question, um, and it's one I threw in towards the end of the series last year um, when I stopped asking people what the score prediction was because I realised it was a stupid question. <laughs> It's, it's basically what is you know because there's been a an attraction to this part of football especially over the pandemic and, and non-league football has seen a rise in the tendencies and people taking a bit more of an interest but what's the one thing you'd say to someone who hasn't been to watch the local non-league side to convince them to come and give it a chance Ooh. Well, you want that's, to well, thanks for that. <laughs> that's all right <laughs> um me personally, I, I think it's all about the experience, and I don't mean that in a corny kind of way. Um, I, I, I support Stockport County. I have done all my life, but coming here is a different vibe. You see, prop men playing the football. There's no histrionics. There's no rolling around ten times because they've blown the nose. It's it's a good game of football. There's, the people treat you well, and there's just no stress. It's just nice to watch a good game of football. Yeah, you know the, they're not sort of you know chaperoned away from fans and speaking to fans and you know and 
you know, all our players are encouraged to go into the bar after the game, speak speak to the fans, speak to our volunteers, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, a football club of our size, we, we just wouldn't cope without Keith and Judith and, you know, and our photographer, Marky. You know, everyone just doesn't do one role. We, we just, you know, all right, I'm general manager, Keith says, you know, media office, but we just all come together to make the football club a success off the pitch. You know, um, and I think that that's the biggest attraction. You come down here, and you know, you'll see one of us in our town kit, and and you know, we'll all have a have a conversation with you. You know, whether we know you or, or we don't know you, and and that's part of us trying to be friendly and, and welcoming and attract you know crowds in into non league. Well, that's that's yeah, that exactly with with ourselves. You know. When we we were with um, at Gig Lane with Berry, um, I might get crucified for mentioning being at Gig Lane with Berry, but let's it's all right. Let's carry on. Um, you'd go and you'd go with the two or three people of handful of people that you go to the football with, and you might talk to the person in the row in front of you or the person you sat behind you. Now. I, we go to a game and everybody knows everybody. Everybody's part of it. Everybody owns it, you know, and it's that everybody's in it together. It's not like, oh, I've got to go on Saturday. It's, it's I want to go on Saturday, you know, because sometimes, I mean, you'll know being a Stockport fan and I know being a Berry fan, sometimes going to the football is hard. You know, <laughs> listen, John, listen I, I'm a Middlesbrough fan, and that is that is hard work. That is stressful. But this, I, I went to County in the seventies, and boy, I've seen some games of football. Hey, you'll have, you'll have seen our gaffer play them, won't you? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, yeah when he was there we playing. go. Aye, yeah. hey, excellent. Well, I, I did slip him a tennis, so you know that. <laughs> and a funny one, Johnny. You might, you know. Um, I actually went Chris Chris Holt. Uh, I went to school with his with his brother Ryan, and oh, okay. uh, and and Sean and Jilly's mum mum and dad actually live probably two minutes away from from my house. And uh, I actually saw Chris uh, <laughs> last week and had a chat with him whilst he was uh, having a little walk with his with his daughter and his dad. So you know, he's, it, he's, he's a top, not playing that either. <laughs> top lad, Chris. Well, I don't know who's there and I don't know who's on holiday. I don't know who's where. I know I know. Watts is in Florida, but that's I don't know who's where and who's everywhere. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's better, Florida or Stockport. I don't, I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Really. Give me, give me football in Stockport any day. You know, <laughs> you wait right. till it's raining on Saturday. <laughs> let's hey, let's hope not. Right. Well, lads, thank you very much for coming on. Brilliant. And um, I'll it. let you. Go, I'll let you go, and I'll see you on Saturday. I'd just like to say a huge thanks to Jonathan and Keith for coming on the show, and I can't wait to meet you guys on Saturday and say hello. Um, Thank you very much for tuning in and watching my face talk for 20 minutes, however long this is. Um, Again, season tickets are on sale. Get your season tickets. Our sexy new home shirts are on sale. And that purple goalkeeper shirt is going on sale very soon. Um, I'm going to stop waffling. Come and say hello on Saturday at Stockport Sports Village. I'm Johnny Greenhouse, and I'll be back soon.